everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got a big beast on the desk today. This is the Lenovo Idea Center Y700 Gaming PC. They let us borrow this for a couple days to check out. And this is kind of our continuing saga of looking for low cost gaming devices. And this is under $1,000, just under $1,000. It uh, has a GTX 960 GPU on board with two gigabytes of uh, video RAM, a 3.2 gigahertz quad core i5 Intel processor. Uh, that's an i5 6500. So it is a new uh, current generation Skylake chip. So it's up to date on that. Uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, but it also has a 120 gigabyte SSD as well. So you can boot up uh, faster with that SSD. That's where Windows is installed. And you can put a couple of games on there too, perhaps uh, to get faster access times, but you also have that larger capacity drive if you need it. Uh, so it's kind of on the lower end of the gaming spectrum if you're out, uh, you know, pricing out one of these things. But uh, again, the pricing is just right. It's just under $1,000. I looked at building my own version of this on Newegg and I found that you probably spend about the same building your own as you would buying this outright, at least at the moment for the current components that are available. So uh, it's priced pretty well uh, to where you might find a do-it-yourself machine, but this is an out-of-the-box kind of solution. On the top here, you've got a couple of ports to look at. You've got a card reader up here for SD cards, two USB 3.0 ports, as well as two USB 2.0 ports. I've got my Logitech keyboard dongle in there right now. That's why that one's in use. Uh, you also have a microphone and headphone jack here too, so you can plug in a traditional headset. Uh, there is an optical drive on this one too, so you've got a DVD burner. This is not a Blu-ray burner, but you, you could buy one, I guess, and pop, pop it in there. There's plenty of room. In fact, you've got another uh, spot down below to add another device if you want to do that. Around the back here, we'll just take a look on the back. It looks like any standard ATX oops, PC, actually, if I don't destroy my desk in the process. Uh, you've got uh, two more USB 2.0 ports, a PS2 keyboard mouse port. Uh, they've covered up the VGA and HDMI connectors on here because if you plug something into this, you'll get the Intel graphics. You want to plug into that NVIDIA GPU down here. So uh, they covered those up for your convenience. Two more USB 2.0 ports, another two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, you got gigabit ethernet as well as some audio connectors, including optical out on there. It's actually pretty easy to get into it as well because there's a little latching mechanism here and there's a, a, a just a button you kind of push down on the top here and that will uh, open up the casing here. So it's a pretty uh, tool-free kind of design. Uh, the interior layout here is actually pretty nice. They've gotten a lot of the cables out of the way, so there isn't too many airflow issues in here. Uh, there is uh, fans on the front here as well, so the air will flow this way. You've got a big fan here in the back, a uh, pretty standard CPU fan here. You can, of course, uh, change that CPU out, so if you want to move to an i7 processor later on, you can do that. Uh, one thing of note is that there is only one 16x PCIe slot in here, so you can't do an SLI arrangement on the GPU. So if you wanted to buy a second 960 and do a parallel thing with their SLI connection, you can't do it uh, on this motherboard because it just lacks the slot. In fact, you can see where you could probably put it right there, but uh, it just doesn't have it. So if you're looking for SLI down the road, this is probably not the choice for you. Uh, but there is a bunch of uh, spots available on their SATA connectors, so you do have some room to add additional drives. You can, of course, add more RAM to it also. Uh, and it's uh, pretty much a uh, run-of-the-mill ATX PC once you get inside of here. I would imagine you could probably swap out the motherboard later in life as well and keep uh, the case here because it is a pretty nice uh, laid out case. So I'm going to put this back together now. Uh, we're going to boot it up and see how well it performs. So we'll start with everybody's favorite game, Minecraft, and we're getting frame rates in the 7 to 800 frames per second territory. Sometimes it dips down to 600 or so, but uh, either way, I don't think you're going to have any problems playing Minecraft on this device. It really runs uh, quite nicely. We are running the performance enhancing Optifine plugin that gives us a little bit better performance, but uh, as you can see here, it is running uh, very, very well without any issues whatsoever. All right, here I am playing Rocket League with a few of my robot friends here. As you can see, we're getting uh, some pretty good frame rates here, above 60 frames per second as we're uh, running through the game here. So it's definitely able to keep up with that. I'll uh, show you what my settings are here as well so you can get a feel for exactly what I did to everything when I set up the game initially. I should note that I am uh, capturing at 30 frames per second through my studio hardware here. So I don't have yet a 60 frames per second switcher. Uh, so that is why it doesn't look as silky smooth as it might if you were here with me at the moment. But uh, as you can see, it is able to run Rocket League quite well at high settings. 
All right, next up is Grand Theft Auto 5, and I'll start here with our settings so you can see exactly what's configured on here. I went with the default settings that the NVIDIA Experience recommended for my graphics card. Uh, you'll note that we are at 30 hertz again due to my recording hardware, but I turned VSync off, which means we will get as many frames as this thing can push out. Uh, so we will see some clipping as we are uh, running through the recording here. I'll just scroll very quickly through the rest of it here. Uh, you can pause it if you need to to see everything else. You will see we are a bit limited by our video RAM, so uh, that might impact the overall image quality that we might be able to crank out of this as we're playing here. But uh, as we're walking through here, we're in the high 40s to low 60s. Uh, like what I've seen on other uh, lower end gaming devices, the Grand Theft Auto 5 frame rate tends to be a little inconsistent uh, given that the game does uh, vary quite a bit in what's going on on screen, uh, what kind of things it's drawing in, what kind of artificial intelligence might be running at the same time. So uh, your mileage will always vary, but uh, it is able to run well over 30 frames per second at an image quality that will be better than what you might see uh, on a game console. Again, if you had a, a more beefier GPU like a 970 or a 980, uh, you would get uh, better frame rates with better image quality, but uh, as you can see here, it does look pretty nice and it will run at a really decent frame rate. And depending on where you are in the game, you'll see frame rates at 60 or higher, and sometimes you won't, but uh, overall, it's a very playable experience here on this machine. And again, not too expensive either to get in the door with this one. All right, now we're going to take a look at some benchmarks. We're running the 3D Mark suite of benchmarks. So we'll get an idea of how well this performs on paper, or at least digitally on paper. And we have the CloudGate test running right now. We'll do a couple of these. Uh, this is their lower end test, which uh, is kind of geared towards lower end PCs. But I like to start with this one just to compare it against some other ones that we have. Uh, and on the final score here, you see we get a pretty decent frame rate. Uh, we get a score of 15,903, which actually puts it below uh, the Y700 laptop we looked at two weeks ago. But take a closer look at the scores here. Uh, we get 195 frames per second and 207 frames per second on the first and second graphic tests, uh, respectively, on the desktop computer. Lower scores on the laptop for the GPU, but because the laptop has an i7 processor, it does better on the physics test, which is why uh, we get a slightly lower score here. So it does perform uh, pretty well here on this test and about in line with where I would expect it would be with this GPU and processor combination. All right, this next test is the Skydiver test, which is a little bit more taxing on both GPU and processor. And as you can see, we're getting uh, well over 60 frames per second right now on this one. So that is a good sign to see uh, that this is able to keep up with that. On the Skydiver test, our final score is 17,059. That does put it ahead of our uh, laptop that we looked at, 111 frames per second and 108 frames per second on the first and second graphics test, as well as a uh, physics score of 69, which actually is uh, pretty much in line with the i7 on that uh, Lenovo laptop. So you can really see the differences here between an i7 on the mobile side and an i5 on the desktop side. On the gaming PC that I have here in the studio that is kind of like my uh, control device, we get a score of 27,106. This is with a uh, older generation i7 processor, but a GTX 970 GPU. So you can see the difference in uh, GPU performance just by upgrading to that 970, which is maybe something you may want to consider depending on what your budget is. All right, this next test is designed to really tax modern hardware. This is the Fire Strike test, and this is the low end of the Fire Strike test. So as you can see, we're getting uh, anywhere from 20 to 35 frames per second or so here on this second graphics test that it's running uh, in this benchmark. So this one is really taxing, uh, and it really pushes hardware to its limits. So on this one, we get a final score of 6,000. 106, which isn't too bad actually, uh, and you can see how that compares against that laptop, but also against my gaming PC with the GTX 970. Again, you can really see the difference here with just having a little bit more GPU horsepower. Uh, you can get better frame rates, and of course, if you go with the i7 processor, you'll do a little bit better there too, uh, but again, that is something where uh, you need to spend a little bit more to get that stuff, and if you're trying to keep your budget down, I think for most modern games, if you adjust the settings properly, this will probably be able to keep uh, a decent frame rate for you. So that is the Lenovo Idea Center Y700 desktop gaming PC. Pretty decent performance for the price. Again, you're under $1,000, just under $1,000 here, but uh, you get a complete out-of-the-box PC with Windows installed, 
uh, ready to go. And I think you really would have a hard time building one for less money. Maybe if you bought cheaper components or things that aren't as a uh, name brand, perhaps you might be able to get in with uh, a better price. But I think this really is about where you would spend on similar hardware if you were to do a build your own uh, kind of thing. But if you're not looking to build your own and want something simple, this might be the way to go. There are a bunch of different configurations of this computer. There's also another version above this one. And I think they have a, a deal with Razer now too. So there's a lot of choices out there, but this one, at least from what I was able to uh, discern from Lenovo's product offering is the least expensive one that's out there right now. And it does perform pretty nicely. If you are looking for some more details on the specifications, it has a 450 watt power supply as well as a DDR4 RAM too. So it's relatively up to date, uh, but again, you are a little bit limited in what you can put in for additional graphics cards. You of course could take out uh, that 960 GPU and put another one in later into that uh, 16X slot, but there's no way to do the SLI, but uh, you can do the processor and the RAM and the storage and maybe even add a Blu-ray burner or something if you wanted to do that too. So there is some expandability here. And again, a pretty simple out of the box solution. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.